In the simplest terms, a titration curve is basically just a plot of the volume of titrant that you're adding to the analyte versus pH. And what the general shape of a titration curve looks like is kind of like this. And if you haven't seen my titration stoichiometry uh, problem video yet, I'd highly recommend that you look at that because in that video I explain how titrations work. So back to this. Um, this is a curve of a strong acid and it is being titrated with a strong base. And you can tell that it's starting out with a strong acid because the pH is very low. And remember that the lower the pH is, the um, stronger the acid is. So here we're going to add more and more titrant or more and more of the strong base. And then here you see a big jump up to a very high pH. So over here it's extremely basic and here it's very acidic. And then here is what we call the equivalence point. It's pretty much halfway up this huge jump. So this is the equivalence point. All right, and what's happening is we have our acid, so let's say HCl because that's a strong acid, and when you have it in solution, it's present as H plus ions and Cl minus ions. But when we add a strong base to it, let's say NaOH, that goes into solution as Na plus and OH minus ions. Now here, the Na plus and Cl minus are spectator ions because they don't really do anything or change chemically. It's just that these uh, H plus and OH minus ions are going to combine to neutralize each other and make H2O. So what's happening here is we have a lot of HCl and not that much NaOH yet. So because we have a lot of HCl, which is a strong acid, that's causing the solution to be very acidic. Now here, the equivalence point is where the moles of HCl equal the moles of NaOH. So as you can see, the equivalence point is at a pH of around 7, which is perfect because we have a strong acid and a strong base. When they have equal um, moles, then the pH is 7 or neutral. And then up here we have a lot of NaOH, so now NaOH is in excess and it's causing the solution to be basic. But let's see what happens when we have a strong acid and a weak base as opposed to a strong acid and a strong base. Okay, I'm back and now we're going over a titration curve for a strong acid and a weak base. So here you see that the pH is still really low meaning that we have our strong acid to start with. So let's go with HCl again. And for our weak base, let's go with NH NH3, which is ammonia. And we see that our equivalence point is around here. Now notice that this isn't at 7 like the other um, titration curve that we looked at. It's a little below 7, so that means that at the equivalence point, uh, the solution is slightly acidic, and the reason for that is because we have a weak base instead of a strong one that's uh, balancing out the effects of the strong acid. And also, if we write this out, uh, the equation for NH3 when it's placed in water is it partially dissociates or ionizes into NH4 plus and OH minus. Now, since this doesn't go to completion, some of it stays at NH3 and some of it changes into NH4+. And since NH3 is a weak base, its conjugate acid, NH4+, is pretty, uh, it's a little stronger than uh, the strength of NH3. So since this is a stronger acid, it's also causing the solution to be a little acidic. And you'll see something similar to that when we look at the weak acid and strong base titration curve. Okay, so we've got the same general shape for a titration curve with 
a weak acid and a strong base, but notice that the pH isn't as low as what it was before. Before it was like around here. So because we're starting out with a weak acid, it's uh, the pH isn't going to be as low. Plus, when we look at the equivalence point, when we go, let's say it's around here, and move over to where it says the pH is, uh, the pH is a little higher than 7 now. So that means that it's going to be a little bit basic. Following the logic that uh, we used for the strong acid weak base um, titration curve, when we have a weak acid such as acetic acid, so H C2H3O2, uh, that partially dissociates into acetate and H plus ions. But remember, it's only partial dissociation. So, because acetic acid is a weak acid, its conjugate base is stronger. So, since acetate is more of a strong base, it's going to um, accept protons and change back into this. So it's going to uh, cause the pH at the equivalence point to be a little higher than 7. Also, I'd like to point out that in here, you have what is called a buffer, buffer region. So what's happening here is... Uh, when we titrate the acid, the weak acid with a strong base, we have a conjugate acid-base pair. So uh, what's happening is if we have a strong base such as NaOH, it's going to uh, steal the H plus ions from the H-C2H3O2. So, what's that, so what that's going to create is a bunch of uh, acetic acid and a bunch of acetate. And that's going to create a buffer because there are conjugate acids and bases. So uh, in the middle of the buffer region, which is half of the equivalence point, we're actually going to see that the pH is equal to pKa. And remember from the henderson hasselbalch equation, which is pH equals pKa plus log of concentration of the base over the concentration of the conjugate acid, that whenever these two are the same, that just simplifies to 1, and the log of 1 is just 0. So uh, what we get from here is that pH equals pKa, meaning that the concentration of the conjugate, conjugate base and the conjugate acids are the same.